Hello, and thanks for tuning in to another My Name is Miss Battle. Good morning, good morning. It is a beautiful day, for this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us be glad. For I say anything, and even what this video is about, of course, you'll know with the title. Let's give God his honor. And Father God, I just thank you right now in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Father, for you are God all by yourself. I thank you, Father, for Jesus. And I thank you, Father, for the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, I ask that you open up our hearts, our minds, to receive your word. And not only to just receive it, but to be doers of your word. And I ask that you give everybody that's listening to this video a special blessing, Lord. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen, amen, amen. The Bible said, if, you lift, if God said, if you lift me up, I'll draw all men into thee. He's, if all we got to do is lift up God's name, and God going to do the drawing. So, I'm glad you tuned in, because now I need to break down this salvation, because I think it's been taken for granted. I'm here to tell you, salvation is free. Salvation is free. And I will be reading, so this video will speak for itself. That's the reason why I, I need to read this. But I want you to understand, just because salvation is free, it wasn't cheap. It ain't cheap. Oh, man. Let's just... First, I'm only, I, I have two books. I'm coming from the book of Ephesians. Ephesians 2 and 8. And then I'm going to read the book of Romans, starting at chapter 5. And I'm going to read two chapters. I'm letting you know right off the flip, uh, three chapters. <laughs> because it's about this Christian walk. And so, without further ado, I don't even need to keep on talking. Let's jump on to Ephesians. Ephesians 2 and 8. And it reads as, For by, for by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves... It is a gift of God. Gift of God. Okay. Not of works. Not of going to church three days a week. Not even the Bible say, he going to say, they prophesizing in my name. That means they doing some works in my name. That's the reason why it's manifesting. But in the end, he going to say, I knew you not. You workers of iniquity. Because that's the Bible say, Lord, didn't I prophesy and didn't I do this and didn't I? Yeah, you did it. But I know you not. Because you did it. My word going to stand true. My word going to last forever. So whoever delivered the word, good um, kudos to you. <laughs> okay? If you are a deliverer of the word, there's a special blessing for you. But again, I knew you not. You workers of iniquity. That's all I got to say. Now, and, and again, I say I'm not trying to change nobody's perspective, religion, or anything. I stand I stand with the word of God. And I stand alone right now. You know what I'm saying? But it's okay. Because you have to. You have to. I want you to know you have to. If God got something for you to do, there is a place or a point of isolation. Okay, because you need that isolation, no interference. I'm telling you what I know. But anyway, but back to salvation, because salvation is free. You know what? When we but when we get a gift, let's talk about a gift, because it is a gift from God. When somebody give you a gift. It's free. You don't necessarily have to take the gift. You can say Thank you. Put it in your closet. You can re-gift it. Thank you. But I'm going to give that gift to the next year to somebody else because I can't use it. <laughs> you can get that gift and you can be blessed with it. You can, oh, something I needed. I needed this gift. Thank you forever. You can get a gift. A cheap gift. I can go to the dollar store. And I can buy a dollar. They're a dollar twenty-five now. 
I can go get you a dollar twenty-five gift. And I can get that same gift to two people. I can get that one dollar twenty-five scarf uh to this person and they'll wear it forever because they appreciate it. But I can get that same dollar twenty-five gift to this person, and like I said, they look at it like, no, you didn't buy me a dollar twenty-five. I don't want this. Salvation is free. It's a free gift. You don't have to take it. Or you can take it and throw it away. Let us read now. I'm in the book of Romans. And I'm going to start at chapter 5. And I didn't pre-read this, so let's just move on with the word of God. Romans chapter 5, verse 1. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access to by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in the tribulation also, knowing that tribulations work Patience and patience work experience, and experience hope, and hope make it not a shame, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. For when we were yet without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet preventure for a good man, some would even bear to die. But God commanded his love toward us. In that, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more then, being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath. Through him. For if, when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by death of his son, much, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. I'm going to stop here. Because, see, this is, this is the justification part. Again, God knows the heart of man. Our mouths say we believe. Even the devil believe. Our mouths say uh, we say, but our heart ain't say. And I'm just telling you the truth. Because God sees the heart. And so he knows that man has always has motive to do. You know, they, they, they motivated by... <laughs> By things, okay? But this here is saying we are justified once you become a true saint. Not that you walk in and so holy. No, 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 no. That your heart actually received and believed and received Christ as your Savior. The blood of Jesus, when he died upon the cross, that blood... Through Jesus, we are justified. Just like Adam, which I'm going to read, but I'm going to go ahead and just like Adam, the first man, because he sinned, by, because he was disobedient to the Lord and did what the Lord told him not to do, the whole world fall under condemnation because he's the first man. He's the first man. He's the first Jesus. Or you could say Jesus is the second Adam. I don't care how you say it. But it's the same, but only the first man condemned the whole world because now we know right from wrong. And now we are condemned because we know right from wrong. But the second man, Jesus Christ, he died that sin no longer. You are now justified by your acts through Christ. You are justified. You are now saved, clean slate, walking 
Hopefully, see, that's the goal. It ain't that those that believe, but it's those that believe and follow Christ. You, I don't have to keep going back saying, God said, mm, I love those that follow me. It's those that follow Christ. And that is what this message is about today. Because I know you thought you can just say I'm saved because you believe in, you believe in, and, and you're a good person. I know you, I know you thought you were saved. Mm -mm. It's not until the heart, and you know when the heart transition, because that new tongue he's talking about, your language will change. That's what I believe. You know, the gift of tongues, that can be pretty broad if you ask me. I'm not asking nobody to agree with me or anything, but let's just speak on this real quick. Because the gift of tongue, he said, I'll give you a new, you know, you have a different language. You just have a different talk. You're not talking the same way you used to. You're not cursing the same way you used to. You know what I'm saying? You have a new tongue. You have a new frame of mind. I don't even want to get into that, them gifts, but the gift of salvation is free to them that receive it. And once you receive it, you will start, your desires will change to God's desire. Your desires will change to not to want to walk in this world doing these things that the world loves, you know. we It just changes. So I'm here to say that you've been justified by faith because, see, faith is what holds it all together. He said we believe by faith, not by what we see. You cannot see faith. You got to have faith in your heart. But I'm going to tell you, faith is... Faith, that's a, like I said, this salvation thing, it ain't, it, ain't, it ain't cheap. It ain't cheap at all, so don't play God cheap, okay? It's free, but it ain't that cheap gift I was, I was just telling you about. I don't care how, how you can, I can buy it. Oh, good example. Here go a good example. Thank you, Lord. It ain't got to be, it ain't got to be a dollar and something. It could be a house. It could be a car. It could be. It could be anything, and you buy it for somebody. One person would say, oh, God, thank you. You have blessed me. And we'll keep it up. We'll keep that gift, cherish that gift. But somebody can give you that same gift, and you could say, well, it ain't the area I want to live in, but I'm going to take it because it's free. Oh, man, if you don't check your attitude, attitude. That, so that's the point I'm getting to. Just because the gift is free don't mean that it didn't cost because it cost Jesus Christ his life. Oh, that's a very expensive gift. Now what you going to do with it? You going to throw it back in his face? Or are you going to desire, desire to walk the right way? Walk in his path? Get yourself away from all them wicked people that you're dealing with. Get yourself away from all that unrighteousness. Get yourself away from the clique. Because <laughs> get yourself away from all this secret, secret society and secrets and get gossip and just secrets. I'm here to tell you, God don't, God don't like secrets. That's why he said, I'm going to expose it. He said, I'm going to expose every secret. This is a revealing God. He's going to reveal everything in due season. So all this undercover sneakiness that you walk in and you be at church on Sunday. <laughs> Let's continue. The gift is just because it's free. This gift ain't cheap. Let's continue. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin. And so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. For until the law sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed when there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam transgressions. Who is the figure of him that was to come? See, that's what I was saying. He's the figure of him that was to come. Adam is the first Jesus. And, and okay, if you want to call it that, but it was Adam first or Jesus is the second Adam. 
the second Adam, the righteous Adam, the Adam that did the right thing, the Adam that said, okay, Father, I'm going to do what you want. Okay, Father, I'm going to die for them. I'm going to die for the whole world. Everybody ain't going to want this gift, but I'm going to die for them anyway. That's this Adam we're talking about. So, for the whole world transgressions, but not as an offense, so also is the free gift. For if through the offense of one, many are dead, but more, but much more, the grace of God, the gift by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, had abound unto many. Grace. Grace. The whole world is saved by grace because it's still, it's still functioning. The world is still functioning. If you still functioning, you're saved by grace. Even if you ain't functioning, you could be brain dead or, or, or brain alive and body neck down. Can't move. So your brain is alive. So God bless you because you still, oh man, you still have your thought pattern. So you still saved by grace. Oh, man. Oh, man. Because, see, the thing is with grace, grace is a gift. I ain't, I ain't read that. Grace is another gift. That's salvation. It was a gift. It's, it's free. And grace is the free gift that God has blessed upon on the ones that can now see the light. Now, you have grace for salvation. Grace to be saved, once you become saved, God has given you that grace, that free gift to be saved, to even acknowledge salvation. You see what I'm saying? Because the grace is is that free that free gift acknowledges okay, uh it acknowledges the the kingdom of God. Okay. Once you recognize the kingdom of God, and once you recognize the spiritual, once you start living spiritual, start seeing out of your spiritual eyes, that is salvation of the grace of God. You have that grace because now you see spiritual things. Now you know salvation. Because now you have experienced salvation. And that's the reason why the Bible say, uh, for if, if you turn after knowing you, and after, after this free gift, after all this, you know this, and then you still go back to the world. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. You know what <laughs> Mr. T said? I pity the fool. <laughs> I that that came up. Pity the fool <laughs> that that tastes salvation and know that it tastes good, but then you go back into the world. You are not in grace. Let me let you know that you're not in grace because you came from up under that grace. You in self now. I gotta finish reading and. 16. I'm still at 5 and 16. And not as it was by one that sinned, so is the gift. For the judgment was by one to condemnation. But the free gift is of many offense and to justification. Like I said, once you get saved, you have been justified. You've been justified. For if by one man offense death reign by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace. And of the grace of righteousness shall reign in life by one, Jesus Christ. And therefore, as by one offense of one judgment came upon all men to condemnation, even so, by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men into justification of life. For as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound. But where sin abound, grace did much more abound. That as sin has reigned unto death, even so 
might grace reign through righteousness until eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. If the law wasn't here, we wouldn't know if he's doing right. I mean, it wouldn't be no offense because you didn't break no law because it ain't no law. How can you break a law? There's no law. So now, <laughs> that's what it's all about. Uh, moreover, the law entered that offense might abound, but where sin abound, grace did much more abound. Okay, and so therefore, now that you've been saved, grace abound over much more, over even once you get saved, even we fall short. That's what he's talking about here. Grace abound much more. Yeah, you've been saved, you've been justified, and, and salvation is yours, but you will keep falling short somewhere. Somewhere. Look at, and if you want to know where, all you got to do is look at the fruits of the Spirit. Is you falling short in love? You can't do that because that's number one. Without love, there is nothing. That God is love. So without love, you don't even have salvation. So you can eliminate that one. You, you got love. <laughs> But is you falling short in peace? Is you rocking with Jesus because he said, if you rock with me, I'm going to give you peace. Peace that surpasses all understanding. So if you don't have this peace, grab hold to it, okay? Or you falling short in kindness. Don't just be kind at church and with the church people. Are you really kind? Are you really kind? Are you giving for you could say, I gave? So you can boast about it and tell the world, oh, yeah, I gave them that. Mm. Where are you falling short? It's up your shortness is not my shortness. Or are you falling short in self-control? Okay, can you control self? Can you control your actions, your thoughts? Because you ought to be able to control it. Because Paul say, the mind, hold on, okay, grab hold. That's what the scriptures say. Grab hold to your thoughts. I can't keep going there. I got to go and finish. Let's, okay, where am I at? I'm on the next page. Because I might have time. I don't know, but I want to get through it. Chapter 6. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? That's what I just said. You cannot continue in sin. You got to, and that's, that lets you know your side, that lets you know where you stand for real. Because if you continuing, if you still living with this man and y'all ain't married, oh man, you're living in sin. You're living in sin. <laughs> if you still lying every day, <laughs> you're living in sin. <laughs> uh, God forbid, as you walking in self, in, in, out of self-control, the lustful thoughts, the greed, you, you know, you want this, I want this, I want this, I got to have this. Yeah, I'm going to get paid for this. I need to make this money so I can get that. Let's go ahead. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead in sin live any longer therein? Because once you become saved, once you've been baptized, let's talk about the baptism. Because when you got baptized, you, that's you, killing your human man, your human flesh. You've been baptized, you've been dipped in the water. Now you come up clean with a clean slate. Because you just confessed Christ once you got saved. You didn't confess Christ. And then you come to the throne to be baptized. The second that's the second one. It don't necessarily have to be in that order. You can, you can be baptized and accept Christ. But the baptism is, is you saying, I'm a new person. When you come up out that water, you are a new creature in Christ. You are you starting over as a baby. You got to learn these scriptures. You got to learn how to act. You got to go through some trials and tribulations because that's what this life is. I told you I'm about this life. <laughs> Let's, cause I want to get to that. Let me read. Uh, God forbid. Okay. God forbid. How shall we that are dead in sin live any longer therein? Know ye not that so many of us 
as we're baptized into Jesus Christ. We're baptized unto his death. And therefore we are buried with him by baptism unto death. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in a newness of life. See, you've been dead. That once you and all until you get saved, you 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 a walking dead man. That's what you are. You a walking dead man. Okay? So now that you once you become saved, again, that's a newness of life. You're not a dead man. You're alive now. You're alive. You, everything in you is alive through spiritual life. You, you have a, a spiritual life that you should be walking toward. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. For he that is dead is freed from sin. Now, if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him, knowing that Christ, being raised from the dead, died it no more. Death has no more dominion over him. Jesus Christ has conquered death. There's nothing else. Did. He didn't conquer death. He didn't died and raised from the dead. Can't no devil do that. Can't no nobody, no God, no whoever you call, no Buddha, no nobody can do that. Nobody can raise from the dead, but Jesus. And so now that you say you've been raised from the dead, okay? You salvation is free. That's a free gift. Knowing that Christ being raised from the dead, death no more, death has no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died into sin once. But in that he liveth, he liveth into God. And likewise reckon ye also yourselves to be dead in, in deeds into sin, but, al but alive into God. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that ye should obey it in the lust thereof. He said, quit obeying what the your flesh want. Your flesh want money. Your flesh want sex. Your flesh want this. Your flesh want that. Your flesh want a car. Your flesh want to be a president. Your flesh want to be the head honcho. Your flesh want to say, come to me. Ask me for advice. I got all the information. That's what flesh <laughs> Okay. Neither ye yield your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourself unto God as those that are alive from the dead and are members as instruments of righteousness unto God. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. Because, see, if you're under grace, grace supersedes the law because, see, there's no law against love. There's no law against kindness. There's no law against long suffering. There's no law against kindness and patience. There's no law against patience. Okay? But know that these things, when okay, now that you know you say, and now you finna walk in righteousness, or uh, or desire to walk in righteousness, it's the desire, y'all. It's the desire. Because we ain't gonna always walk, because like I say, no man is good. The Bible say that. No, not one. We all fall short. So when you fall short, which shouldn't be on a daily, daily basis, see, that's where the growth come in because, see, now you can say no to some things. And you see yourself growing. Use that as your growing scale. Learn how to say no to self. <laughs> to self. Okay. What then shall we say? Oh, wait a minute. What then shall we say? What then shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? God forbid. Know ye, know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey, rather of sin unto death or obedience unto righteousness. 
Let me say this. This this the point here. This finna nail it home. <laughs> you obey whatever you walking into. Okay, let's you anonymous, alcohol anonymous. You know, all that that's they thing. You gotta you gotta confess it first. You know, I am I am weak to this, or you know, first step is admitting it, okay? So now that you have admitted it, because see you whatever you walk in. You are a slave of, okay? If you sinning, if you continue to lie, you are a slave to lying. If you continue to steal, you are a slave to stealing. If you continue to drink, you are a slave to drinking. That's what that is. That's what you are a slave to this world. And that's what these are. These are spirits. These You are a slave to these spirits because that's what they are. Don't you know when you start drinking? Don't you know your... A whole demeanor change? That's a spirit. That's a spirit. That's a spirit. Don't you know when you get angry, your whole demeanor change? That's a spirit. So know that, again, you got to start walking and looking out of your spiritual eyes. If you can't see spiritual things, ooh, ooh. <laughs> I'm here to tell you, you are a slave to whatever it is. So once you confess Whatever, whatever your shortcoming is, once you confess that I'm a slave to this, I've been a slave to the world, but I am no longer a slave to this world anymore, okay? I'm no longer a slave to, to lust anymore. I'm no longer a slave to selfishness anymore. Let's move on, because I want to read this. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves, servants to obey, his servant ye are, to whom ye obey, rather sin into death or obedience into righteousness. But God be thanked that ye were servants of sin, but ye have obeyed from the heart that from of doctrine, from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered to you. From the heart, you gotta keep, don't keep skipping these little words, these words, this is a big word, heart. Don't keep skipping. When you read your Bible, take your time. Take your time and read it. So you won't pass these little words that will change the whole outlook on the verse. Being then made free from sin, ye became the servants of righteousness. I speak after a manner of men because of the infirmities of your flesh. For ye, for as ye have yielded your member, members, servants, to uncleanliness and to iniquity and unto iniquity, even so now yield your members servants to righteousness and to holiness. For when ye were servants of sin, ye were free, ye were free from righteousness. Wait, let me read that again. For when ye were the servants of sin, ye were free from righteousness. What fruit have ye then in those things whereof Ye are now ashamed, for the end of those things is death. But now, being made free from sin, and become and became, uh, and become servants of God, ye have your fruits into holiness, and the end everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Okay, last chapter. Know ye not, brethren? How that the law have dominion over a man as long as he liveth? For the woman which hath a husband is bound by law to her husband so long as he liveth. But if the husband is dead, she is loosed from the law of her husband. So then if, while her husband liveth, she be married to another man, she shall be called an adulteress. But if her husband is dead, she is free from the law, from that law, so that she is no longer an adulteress. And through, though she be married to another man, and wherefore, my brethren, ye also are become dead to the law by the body of Christ, that ye should be married to another, even to him who is raised from the dead, that we should bring forth fruit of God. You already know that we are the bride of Christ. We are married to Jesus. For when we were in the flesh, 
the motions of sins which were by the law, did work in our members to bring forth fruit of death. And when he say members, he's talking about our bodies, our members of our bodies, and he's talking about the body of Christ. But now we are delivered from the law, that being dead wherein we were held, that we should serve in newness of spirit and not in the oldness of the letter. Of the letter. What should we say then? Is the law sin? God forbid. Nay, I had not known sin, but by the law, for I had not known lust, except the law had said, thou shalt not covet. But sin, taken occasion by the commandment, wrought in me all manners of conscupious. <laughs> For without the law, sin was dead. Read it for yourself. <laughs> for I was alive without the law once. But when the commandment came, sin revived, and I died. And the commandment, which was ordained to life, I found to be unto death. For sin taken occasion by the commandment deceived me, and by it slew me. Paul is saying, sin, de sin is, will deceive you. Because it's going it, it actually sometimes sin seems like it's right, but you're being deceived because it's sin, okay? Sin, we know, feels good to the flesh, whatever sin it is. It feels good to the flesh, but we know, I can't keep going, look, I got to finish. <laughs> For sin, taken occasion by the commandment, deceived me, and by it slewed me, and wherefore the law is holy, and the commandment holy and just, and good, was then that which is good made death unto me, for God forbid. But sin, that it might appear sin, working death in me by that which is good, that sin, by the commandment, might become exceedingly sinful. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. Last verse, last chapter, like I say, I'm in seven, but I'm going to, I'm not going to read all of seven. For that which I do, I allow not for what I would, that I, for which I do, I allow not for what I would, that do I not, but what I hate, that I do, that do I. And if then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that it is good. Okay, let me break that up real quick. Uh, what, he, what Paul is saying, because everybody uses this scripture, the things I do, the things I don't want to do, I do, you know, I do anyway. The things that I want to do, I don't do. And the things that I don't want to do, I do them anyway. Because we are human. The things that we don't want to do, we do them anyway. That's what he's saying, because you know this is this is King James, so it's a, I must continue. Now then, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwell in me. For I know that in me, that is in the flesh, dwell no good thing. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good, I find not. For the good that I would do, for the good that I would, I do not. But the evil which I would not, that I do. Now, if I do that I would not, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. And I found then a law that when I would do good, evil was present with me. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. But I see another law in my members, warning against the law of my mind, and bring me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. O oh, wretched man that I am, what shall deliver me from the body of death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then, with the mind, I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. 
All right, all right, all right. There is no therefore no condemnation to them which are in Christ. Jesus who walked not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For the law of spirit of life is Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin, the death. We walking in a whole nother law. We walking in a whole nother law, y'all. And so I guess I'll put this down. I'm done reading. Salvation is free. It's a free gift to whoever receive it and keep it and want it. You, you got it, but you threw it away. Go get it, get it. Get you some of that salvation. Get you some get right. That's all I got to say. Get you some get right. So I hope, I hope, and I thank you for tuning in to another My Name is Miss Battle. So, in all doing, have a blessed day. No, I can't go out without praying. Yeah, thank you, Lord. Let me just go on and pray. Let's pray us out us because thank you thank you for tuning in give me matter of fact comment yay nay good bad hit me up let me know what you feel i like i like to i need something to talk about (laughs) father god in the name of jesus i just thank you i thank you for this time right now that you have allowed your word to go freely and i ask that you bless your word and bless the ones that hear your word in jesus Touch our hearts. Take that stony heart in the name of Jesus. And Father God, give us a soft heart. A soft heart that we may that we may love and be kind and be patient. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. Have a blessed day.